Tover O'Brien had an interesting experiment with a panel last week. She got together like the alternative um, coalition. Three people who used to be a national act and New Zealand first. She got them together to have a chat about this current government. And she asked a really important question about did they, did they the people who had been there and done that, think that this government would last its full term. Uh, I think we'll Ooh. go and have a look at that now. This is only uh, 90 seconds, Chewy, uh, and then we can get to it. So this is Heather Roy. I think that um, I agree with, with Chris. I don't like some of the tone either. And I do, I think David's determined to have his discussion and have his select committee hearings. Um, he's made is that it very a clear. Is it a priority for acts Base though, because well, I, how, how I does don't... it square with kind of traditional libertarianism? I know he's doing other things yeah. like charter schools and and the farm act funding and things yeah. as well. And but I, is this? I, I don't know the answer to that question, and I do wonder if he wouldn't have been better off looking at the Bill of Rights and having some mechanism through there um, about a level playing field and equality amongst people. Um, will the coalition implode before twenty twenty six? Anybody? Uh, yes. Yes. Probably. <laughs> Be more decisive, Heather. Uh, come on, Heather. Oh, look, I, I think I think if this is Winston's last shot and he wants to leave a legacy, there's still a thread of possibility that he might do the right thing and behave till the end. But I think the odds are against that. What's it going to look like that implosion? Oh, mate, it's going to oh, be really entertaining. Cool. <laughs> it's going to be great to watch. Co lived through it in 1997 uh, right, with, uh, what was her name? Alamein Kopu or something. <laughs> Who's the one who you should be interviewing when it happens? This is our alternative coalition reaching for the popcorn as <laughs> democracy and the government crumbles in front of our very eyes. There you go. So uh, that was uh, Chris Finlayson. Will the coalition crumble before 2026? A hard yes. Tohanade, a hard yes. Heather Roy, a probably chewy. There's a certain uh, there's a certain working group podcaster who joins us occasionally who's been telling us this, what, since th about three minutes after they signed papers that they wouldn't last the full term. There's three pretty experienced people who, no matter what you say, will still have, you know, uh, a bit of an ear on the internal workings because they'll know people who know people. What are your thoughts? There's not There's a lot not of things, lot of things that, that I miss from, from being, from being on, Twitter. on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> oh you, might, you might have that, that video, up video up getting, the, getting double. the double. I do, I do, I do. Cool. Done. It's all right. Felt my brain breaking. Um, yeah, there's not very many things that I miss from Twitter, right? But following Tohenere is, is one of them. Um, <laughs> because I I find he, he's definitely one of those guys where you... You go, I don't agree with everything that you say, but the things that you say, I can see where you got to them. Yeah. And, and it, it's something that I miss on the right. And I like I would say he's he's probably closer to being a true centrist when we're talking about it. He'll go one way or the other. But he, he he's he's had these interactions. I, I I think I think he's right. It is for, for people like us that that analyze all of this stuff and really get into politics yes if this coalition explode then it will be something pretty fucking interesting and believe me we will go into full hyperbole mode when that when that happens but i think when you've we've when you've got that group of three people and they're all agreeing it's the personalities that they've got in the room Mm. The leader of the coalition is so weak and is not used to that that form of of leadership. And dare I say it, he's not very good at it. Um, you've got nobody controlling the dog and pony show. Winston will 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 run that if he if he's allowed to. And I think the only thing that's holding uh, it together is the fact that when he is on the world stage, he becomes a statesman. And when he's back in domestic politics, he's an absolute shit stirrer. He's a cooker. And then you've got you've got Rimmer, who just wants to be the smartest kid in the debate club. <laughs> um, so true. And we still don't know who's who's pulling his strings. Like I, I, I watched that interview with Guy and Espiner in the weekend, and that's a 
goddamn shit show. Mm. Um, like I've I've never seen Seymour as weak in an interview as a as I have now. I don't know if we if we're going to have a look at it. I expect that we will at some stage even if it's not tonight but you know not being able to answer a question like can new zealand afford tax cuts at this stage without disseminating and i'm going to answer your question with an unrelated question and all of this sort of stuff it's it's just an absolute shit show and then luxon doesn't have the spine authority or experience to pull these guys into line by going you are minor coalition partners i need you here but you do not have the votes to dictate policy to me or dictate behavior to me, get in line. He doesn't. He, he, he's treating it as, as like they've all got equal power in this, and they they shouldn't. And I think a better leader would would be able to express that more than going, well, you'll have to take it up with them. You know, you've got Seymour saying that um, Winston is still the least tr tr trustworthy politician in the House. Mm. You can't have your two your two minor party leaders sniping at each other like that. Yeah, um, I don't want to uh, burst your bubble there, but uh, yeah, you missed that one, mate. That was Thursday night. We had a good chat about that. So, oh, was uh, it that early? I, I watched it on the weekend, so I'm I'm glad we've looked at it. But yeah, let, can I let me let me uh, let me offer let me offer one thing. And this is going to make me sound like Uncle Pat, just wanting everyone to be kind. Um, the thing about the government failing before 2026, <clears throat> I think every New Zealander should want whatever colour government's in to do well for New Zealand. Now, we're not seeing mm. that with this government. And I guess my little kind of side note to what you're saying is, as long as them falling over by 2026 doesn't harm the most vulnerable even more. Do you know what I mean? Like if mm. you said to me, I want to see them get through the, ter the this term and the, um, and the vulnerable were harmed bad, or I want to see them fall over and the vulnerable were harmed even worse, then I'd pick the, f the first, the lesser of two evils. But I know it's not it's not much of I'm not putting much of an argument for it. It just makes me kind of think, in theory, don't we all want a government to be successful? I yeah, mean, I look, I I think we've touched on this all the way through the show tonight. We would like politicians that are able to change their point of view based on new evidence and acknowledge yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yes. know, and, and, and we'd like people with different ideological standpoints to at least acknowledge why this is better for the country yes and I, I i think this is the thing is like i'm not seeing very many people on the right that i would go hey look i disagree with you on some pretty key points but i see how you got there i'm seeing a bunch of high-ranking ministers ignoring evidence ignoring people working in those affected fields going hey this is bad and we've seen it before and they're plowing on ahead and it just seems to be what's that um adage in the tech industry move fast and break stuff right you know it, it, as seen as as a positive and that might be in the business <laughs> space it certainly isn't when you're talking about the government Evil. of a country yeah because uh, um, the decisions that you're making and the things that you're breaking by moving so fast have direct effect on people's lives yeah um then the next thing you got to say, just kind of almost be a defeatist of my own argument, is what are they checking themselves for? So we heard last week that they're looking to re to rejig the fast track legislation, and that um, Seymour's hinting towards funding school lunches for a, for an interim for a time. And so straight away you kind of go, oh, so if they weighed up the evidence as we'd like, and they're changing their position, or are they just reading the polls? And they realize that these are not things that are going to sit well with the voter. Third option. And, and, and hang on, hang on. And does it matter? I mean, if if they if they were to do the right thing, even if it wasn't based on the research but the polls, does it actually matter? It still means they're doing the right thing, like school lunches. Hmm. Third option is something we've discussed on the show heaps, is like put out a really unpalatable um product 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the take the flack for it for a bit, yeah, and then yeah. ramp it back down. You've still moved the needle, yeah, yeah, in the direction that you want it. But yeah, you've been no. seen as like, okay, we've heard you, we've heard you. Yeah. The fast we'll meet you in the bill, middle. The fast track bill is is the perfect example. It doesn't matter how many unpalatable parts of that that you take out, like the. Uh, the one that's been sim- singled out is the the minister's overall veto on every, anything. He can just wave in and go, this project goes ahead. And you can go, well, that's completely undemocratic and and that sort of thing. And, and uh, Forrest and Bird spoke about this on, on their um, oral submission, which is well worth watching. Um, but they go, yes, this is egregious and it must go, but it still leaves an overall package of policy that is so rushed, so poorly considered and and we haven't been given enough time to go through and see exactly how fucked this is structurally yeah um but you're you're taking a knee on this one thing and yes we're glad that you're going to take that out but the rest of it is still fucked taking that one bit out doesn't fix it so do you think do you think they're that calculating because because that would be that's that's 4d chess they're playing there if they're doing it like that yeah, I, I honestly don't know. And that and that's concerning as well. Like you, you go up against an adversary and you go, Well, you know, he's playing his game and I'm playing mine and um, you know, we're gonna treat it as as if they, they do know what they're doing, or is it just incompetence and ideology? And and we've talked about how borderline corrupt or just outright corrupt some of the stuff is with the input from the mining companies and the input from overseas lobby groups and that sort of thing. Do they know that they're being used? Are they willing yeah. participants in it? Is it is it just like, I, I can't think of like, when, when, when the worm turns and the left gets in, I haven't seen a backswing like this from them. They're, they always seem to be a little bit like, and, Please chat if you've got any examples where I'm wrong on this. Let me know. But it's not like they went full austerity mode and then Labor came in and they're like, right, universal basic income, we're bringing it in, and there's nothing national can do about it for fucking three years. Hmm. Um, that sort of thing. It's it it seems to be that ideological switch to the other side really really rapidly in a way that we haven't before. 